Bloomberg Audio Studios. Podcasts, radio, news. We're getting some news that Paramount Global is announcing new leadership changes. Ooh. CEO Bob Gatback is stepping down from his role at CEO. Not a surprise to those who've been following over the last few days. Uh, um, again, uh, Paramount Global just out with a press release saying that Global CEO Bob Backish stepping down. Yeah, apparently he wa- he and uh, Shari Redstone were not seeing eye to eye. There are a lot of offers made for different parts of Paramount that he at different points uh, rejected. And uh, as a result, they are not going with any one CEO as as his replacement. They're establishing an Mm. office of CEO, which, does that inspire confidence when the company's trying to sell I don't even know what that means. Well, I mean, but look at who it is. I mean, no, it doesn't inspire confidence to answer your question. Though, I will say this. I mean, when you look at who it is, you're basically talking about Greg Cheeks, who was running CBS. You're talking about Chris McCarthy, who was running uh, the Showtime and MTV networks. And then they're bringing in uh, Brian Robbins, who was, I guess, heading up uh, Nickelodeon and some of the kids programming here. So it's kind of a cross-section of all the major uh, broadcast properties there. So maybe that provide some confidence that the people running this company now are probably more on the content side rather than, uh, you know, just on sort of the, the financial side. But what does it mean for the future of Paramount Global as a standalone public company? It means oh. it's going to be sold and it's sold soon. That's that's where I'm yeah. going with this. So uh, Sherry Redstone, chair of the board, saying that uh, it, uh, Paramount Global includes exceptional assets that we believe strongly in the future of value creation potential of the company. The question is, where does that value come from? Does it come from a new ownership or does does it come from uh, staying independent? Well, that's the other thing, too. I mean, we talk about, I mean, to Scarlett's point, I mean, whether this is a good, good idea to have basically three CEOs uh, thing. Uh, but, like, let's face it, this isn't going to last long one way or the other. If this is sold, yeah. they're going to have to find some different management structure. It, and, and so this is, seems to be much more of a stopgap. I mean, end of an era, though, for Bob Backish, mm-hmm. right? He's yeah. been at Viacom since 1997. Yeah. Uh, he was CEO of Viacom back in 2016, CEO yeah. of the combined company back in 2019. Yeah, and one reason why he was able to rise and stay in, uh, you know, in his position was because he did get along with Sherry Redstone once upon a time, a long time ago. That is no longer the case. And this is definitely a company, Romaine, as you were putting it, uh, set up to be sold. The question is whether it will be Skydance that is the actual acquirer. And of course, that's the Redstone family's preference or Apollo and Sony, or maybe there might even be another dark horse candidate coming in here. I, I do find it interesting if you just look at the three that are, are taking over. And you guys pointed this out, but it's worth spending some time on it as we're also waiting for the number to come out is you Chris McCarthy, president and CEO of Showtime M and MTV Entertainment Studios. You have the Showtime studio part. Then Brian Robbins is the president and CEO of Paramount Pictures. Then you have the movie behemoth. Uh, and then you wind up having uh, Cheeks, George Cheeks, who's the CEO uh, over, he'll be the CEO over at CBS. So then that's sort of the, the trifecta of what Paramount Global actually is. And I wonder how that sets up each of its areas to either be sold separately or then tried to together. Yeah, and I mean, and that's well, that's the big question, though, and a lot of questions about what the what the new structure would look like, whether this would be sort of a, a, a white knight coming in and buying the whole thing, or whether they're actually just mm-hmm. looking uh, for certain pieces of it. And I think, guys, if you're keeping an eye on the wire right now, I think we're actually finally yeah. getting the numbers for the most recent quarter, and they're pretty much what you would expect to miss on several of the key metrics. I'll just give you the top and bottom line here. One Q revenue coming in at $7.7 billion. The street was looking for about $7.74. And as far as the loss per share, at least on a continuing basis, looking at about 88 cents here. Not sure of the comparison, but when you look at uh, the 1Q adjusted EPS for continuing ops, they did beat there 62 cents at 36 cents. So I'm not sure these numbers actually matter. Anymore. Yeah, shares bouncing around a little bit, but still higher in the after hours by a little over 2%. First quarter direct consumer revenue coming in right at estimates of $1.88 billion. First quarter TV revenue at $5.23 billion, missing estimates of $5.33. But Scarlett, like Romaine said, um, the big question is, do these numbers even matter? Do the numbers really matter? Well, if you're a potential bidder, they do, they because the filmed be. entertainment revenue was actually one part of the business that beat analyst estimates. $605 million. The consensus estimate was for 577 And again, if you're Skydance, this really matters, because that this is this is what their, their whole thing is, right? Skydance is making movies, and Paramount has this storied mm-hmm. franchise, and that's what they would be buying. Yep. Uh, interesting, in the earnings release, the statement is from Naveen Chopra, the executive vice president and CFO, so not even Bob Backish there, um, just saying that the team delivered a strong operational and financial uh, performance despite a, quote, dynamic environment we continue to mm-hmm. operate in. Code, that's code. Wow, what are you for? For hot mess. <laughs> <laughs> As I mentioned, we're talking about Paramount uh, up 2% in after hours. This after uh, Paramount Global replaced 
Chief Executive Officer Bob Backish appointing a management committee as the board negotiates a possible change in control of the company. Three of Paramount's most senior executives will run the company, according to a statement released on Monday. Bloomberg News Entertainment Editor Chris Palmieri is in our uh, Los Angeles bureau, and he joins us right now with the latest. Chris, as I mentioned, when this news broke on TV, not at all a surprise that Backish is out. He's been at the company since 97. The reporting around this over the last few days has said that he'll be out. What surprises to me is who's taking over for Backish. It's not one person, it's three. Yes, uh, I, and I and I can't really think of a company that's had three CEOs simultaneously. Your CEO, uh, no, your CEO, no, your CEO. <laughs> Sometimes they've had two, uh, and that works and doesn't work. Uh, but three, uh, I haven't heard of before. Uh, it's an unusual situation because they are negotiating this deal with uh, David Ellison. It would represent a change of control. If that happens, he would become the CEO. So that's clearly part of what's going on here. Uh, and uh, what happens if that doesn't go through, if they continue with this, something probably uh, Paramount's going to get asked a lot. So the stock was higher after, but the company also reported earnings. Do you get a sense of how much the shareholders of the company are kind of embracing this news of now three CEOs? Uh, I, I, well, I think this sort of stock bump started with we and others reported over the weekend that um, there was sweetened terms for the Skydance offer. They're going to invest $3 billion in Paramount, which could be used for debt reduction and do so at a premium to what the current uh, stock is trading at. So I think the market sort of to some degree is responding to that. But the numbers earnings wise were good. I don't think that was uh, Bob Bagish's problem. Uh, revenue was up. They had the Super Bowl in the quarter. So, so that was a uh, boost. But other numbers were good as well. So what was Bagish's problem? Like why why not have Bagish go all the way until an acquisition? Very good question. Uh, it appears that he uh, was opposed to this deal happening uh, and uh, was sort of vocal in the last earnings call saying that he thought whatever deal Paramount worked out should benefit all shareholders. Uh, right now, the Skydance offer would certainly buy out the Redstones family's controlling share of the company, uh, but would possibly dilute the other shareholders uh, through this merger with Skydance. So so his opposition probably is one of the factors involved here. He's also made some missteps that that he, uh, ultimately the board lost confidence in him. So if, if this deal with Skydance actually goes through, um, and again, it's a, a little complicated here because of the different share classes and who has control, would the Redstone family have any ownership of the new company? They're going to keep some residual uh, shareholder um, in the company, but will, won't be the controlling shareholders anymore. So they, they have this um, voting stock, Class A shares. They own 77% of those. Those would be bought by David Ellison and his group. Can you give us a few details about the deal with Skydance Media, led by David Ellison? What would that actually look like for the consumers of Paramount? Yeah, it's very complicated. Uh, so it's a three-part deal, really. So they would buy National Amusements, which is the holding company the Redstones own. They're controlling shares of Paramount in, and also some movie theaters. Uh, Skydance would also invest $3 billion directly into Paramount, and they would merge Skydance and get Paramount shares for that as well. And that's probably the most controversial part of the deal because the valuation of Skydance is on an order of $5 billion and its profits are not nearly what one would pay for, mm. <laughs> for that price. So uh, that's probably the most contentious part, even though, mind you, none of these deal to details have actually been announced publicly. This is all folks like us reporting on it. All right. Well, we certainly appreciate the folks like you, Chris, uh, who are reporting on this and explaining it, breaking it down for our audience. Bloomberg News Entertainment Editor Chris Palmieri, live out there uh, in uh, California in our Los Angeles bureau.